big old bird just flew overhead. Good morning, everyone. So today on the homestead, we have got a good project going on and that is gonna be planting out our hatch chili peppers, which are obviously very ready to go out. Now I have delayed putting them out primarily because our nights were still dropping to the 40s and 50s and for pepper plants that's not exactly ideal they like 60 plus at least so now that we're getting closer into summer and because peppers love warmth um, I think I think we're in the clear to stick these guys out now I do have a couple in here that are teeny weenies but that's okay with it being warm outside what I'll do is I'll just put one of our baskets over the top to protect it from any potential bird bullying so to speak and it should grow like crazy in the next couple of weeks actually with it being warmer out here so let's go on ahead and get these guys over to the bed and I'm going to show you how I'm going to plant them and what I'm using for fertilizer and why okay Let's go. All right, so we're over here in the bed where we are planning on all of our peppers and tomatoes kind of being friendly. Sorry, there's a lot of traffic today. Just fair warning, I'm gonna try and talk over the top of it. But anyway, so this other side of the trellis has tomatoes on it. This whole side all the way down is where we're going to be putting our peppers this year. Now, there's a couple things, obviously, that you need to know about peppers. And this is primarily why we went on ahead and stuck them near the tomatoes, because like tomatoes, so if you've grown tomatoes, this is a good reference point, but just like tomatoes, these guys love nitrogen. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it when construction companies comment on me filming out here. Everybody automatically assumes that I'm talking to myself instead of to the camera. Like, they don't, they don't get it. <laughs> here in this area. So, sorry, I had to take a moment to laugh. Okay. Um, where was I? So, oh yeah, we were talking about putting the peppers in the tomato bed because they have a similar demand for nitrogen. And that's okay because that makes this a very good companion plant. And I can amend this whole bed knowing what the plants need is going to be very, very similarly uh, done, so to speak. But, let me show you what I am going to be using. So I'm going to be making holes all the way down the bed and in the bottom of the holes, I'm going to be putting this all-purpose um, fish and kelp fertilizer. Then, lawnmower, sorry. Then I'm also going to be dressing this guy with some worm casting. All of these guys with worm casting. Now, the primary reason is that these guys are very, very high in nitrogen. They're also very, very rich in other things. Uh, phosphorus, potassium, things along those lines. Now, I love worm castings. So far that has become my ultimate favorite fertilizer for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you're a beginner grower, you really don't have to worry about burning your plants. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, there are certain fertilizers that have to break down for a very specific amount of time before you can put them anywhere near your plants without burning them because they are considered a hot manure or fertilizer. So chicken manure, cow manure would be good examples of that. However, there are other types of fertilizers, such as worm castings, fish and kelp emulsions, uh, oh, rabbit poop, uh, alpaca poop. These guys are all considered cold fertilizers. 
So that means that you can put them directly in there with your plants and you don't have to worry about damaging the plants. So if you are a beginner gardener, you've got some ideas of things to look for. These are safe types of fertilizers to mess with that you don't have to worry over. And for those of you who are intermediate, you probably already knew all of this, but um, that is what we're gonna do today. So let me go on ahead and start getting these guys positioned because I wanna make sure that they do have enough breathing space around each other uh, to be able to bush out. So I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna put you on hyperlapse and then I will come back and show you what it looks like as I'm planting, okay? Here we go. All right, let me get you in here. So here's one of the holes. You can see down in the bottom, those little pellets. That's gonna be the <clears throat> fish fertilizer that I've put down there. And I've done that in all of the holes. And I've basically angled all the holes. And the primary reason for me doing that is I can fit more in the space angling this way than if, say, I just did a row. And that's something that you need to take into consideration, especially if you are a small space gardener, is how you can position things in a smaller space with the highest yield. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our pepper plants, we're gonna plunk it down in the hole, I'm going to dress it with some worm castings, and then we're just gonna bury it, kind of make a little bit of a well around it so that we can get these guys watered in really well. So let me turn you around and show you what we're gonna do. All right, so first hole right there. Got our worm castings. And then our little plant here. And this is probably gonna be one of the ones that I'll put a basket over just to make sure the birds don't bully it too badly. I'm gonna press, not too firmly, but firm enough to make sure that you've got all the air pockets out. You don't want a wobbly plant and air pockets will give you a wobbly plant, especially if you're in a, a windy area, you don't wanna do that. Okay, so that's the first one in. I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is right over here. All right, so that is all of our peppers planted up for today. You, and you probably noticed that I put a pepper down here into the holes. Got one on that end and then one on the other end there. And that's mainly because this is an experiment. Um, when we grew peppers successfully last, no, year before, year before um, we had so that's 20, oh no, I wanna say 2019. We ended up losing every single one of our tomato plants. But that year the trade-off was I had really amazing pepper growth. And we had planted a Mad Hatter pepper and a Poblano pepper at the time. Both of which were delicious, I might add. Um, but, I had planted them in the outer holes of the cinder block beds when I did it because I didn't have the bed space inside to dedicate to the peppers because we weren't this large at the time. All that being said, they were in the worst possible spot and they produced like crazy for us. 
our experiment is to see how well they grow in the holes compared to in the bed this year. We only have the one kind of pepper and that is the hatch chili pepper and we got the seeds out of New Mexico. Now the seeds for hatch chili peppers cost a pretty penny but it is probably the pepper that we consume hands down the most in our household compared to any other type of pepper. So what we really are hoping for is to stabilize them to this growing area and cross the fingers be able to maybe sell the seeds or the plants here locally and then be able to produce a bunch of chili peppers for ourselves, for our family, friends, and then maybe to sell commercially as well so that way we have a, another um, income coming in because when you're doing urban gardening it can be expensive okay I'm not gonna lie it can be expensive so you have to get very very creative with how to grow things and being able to keep it on a budget but having a small income from all of these hatch chili peppers that would help to offset some of the watering costs and things that way that of course every gardener has to take into account. There's one other thing that I was going to talk to you about and that was topping the peppers. Now there are a lot of people that swear by topping peppers, topping tomato plants, um, zinnias, I think marigolds, all kinds of plants along those lines. There's at least a dozen different variety of plants that you can do that with. However, if you live in a shorter growing zone, so you know, you, you have, oh, sorry, I'm grabbing my baskets here to put over the top of them. So if you have a shorter growing season than what we have here, topping your pepper plants may not be the wisest thing to do because pepper plants in general can take a long time from germination to fruiting. These peppers in particular, I think they said that it was about 90 days before you could plant them out. And mine are a little bit small, but that's basically because we ended up starting them a little bit too soon and it was too cold in the Palram greenhouse because we don't have it heated or anything that way so it took them longer to get going because when they get cold they kind of stunt a little bit I wouldn't even quite call it stunting it just it slows their growth but I'm not gonna top them I know that I've got a longer growing time here but for us for peppers our primary harvest time is going to be July August beginning to middle of September after that the temperatures do start to drop particularly at night and that is not ideal for peppers of any sort they like that soil like I said to be above 50 degrees so I don't want a chance losing losing crop <laughs> so that's all I've got for you guys today I hope that this was helpful for you the only other thing that I can advise you when it comes to growing peppers would be obviously water the fruit is made up of about 90 percent water so you really really want to water these guys well at least once a week you want deep watering not just surface watering root system can go a long way when you're getting a lot of high winds but other than that I think that's gonna do it for this vlog sorry about the noise um, but welcome to an urban garden and homestead so I'm gonna sign off finally guys keep it simple natural and essential and I'll see you on the next one I think I need to go get myself a cup of coffee. <laughs> Bye.